Hi, my name is Stian Johansson. I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. Today I would like to talk about God and his creation of the universe. God shows himself both through his word, our Bible, and through his creation, our nature. As both the Bible and science fascinate me, last year I decided to create a PowerPoint series on God and science. And about a month ago I was really thrilled when Douglas asked me to do a podcast for his premium site. I got to know Doug when I uh, when he moved to Sweden 22 years ago, which was right after I was baptized. Now let's talk about the Big Bang Theory. I'm sure you have heard about it, but could you explain it? Hopefully it doesn't shake your faith. It is actually faith building, as I would like to show you during the next 10 to 15 minutes. Hang on. The Big Bang Theory basically states that at some point in time in space there was nothing. Absolutely nothing, that's hard to grasp. And in the next instance the entire universe came into existence in a huge flash of light. That sounds a lot, lot like the first chapter of the Bible in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, talks about the beginning, no date specified. Next verse talks about the emptiness, there was nothing. Verse 3, we have light and everything else coming into existence. Basically it says that the universe was created from nothing. And this is a scientific statement. It doesn't say anything about why it was created. Science usually doesn't talk about why, but it talks about how things happen. And the Bible talks a lot about why it happened, but not very scientifically about how it happened. Generally speaking, the Big Bang refers to an idea that the whole universe has expanded from an extremely hot, extremely dense singularity in the beginning and it continues to expand to this day. Okay? If we just go 100 years back in time, many physicists meant that the universe was not created. It had always existed. They call it a steady state universe. Even Albert Einstein in his earlier days believed in the steady state universe. Of course later he changed his mind when he understood more of the facts and how the universe works. In 1916 he came out with a general theory of relativity that he had to add a factor called lambda, that's a cosmic factor. It helps the equation to be correct, even in circumstances that he couldn't explain, and that kind of bugged him. And he's been said to regret the necessity of such a factor. Then in 1929 Edwin Hubble, who the Hubble telescope was named after, he discovered that our universe is immensely huge, it's much bigger than they believed, and it is actually expanding. And that also points towards that the universe probably was in a small point altogether a long, long time ago. A few years later, 1931, a Belgian guy, he was actually a Roman Catholic priest, he proposed the Big Bang Theory. He didn't call it that, he called it a hypothesis of the primeval atom. But his opponents tried to mock him and call it the Big Bang Theory. And that name kind of caught on and we still use it today. Then during the next kind of, couple of decades they found more and more uh, scientific stuff like antimatter and quarks that are subatomic particles, they were postulated and found because nature works after natural laws. And when you have laws, you normally have a lawgiver. So this is kind of faith building. You can predict what is happening in the universe and you use the laws that we know they work. Anyway, after the Big Bang, after a big explosion, there should be a radiation with a specific temperature. And they have found this temperature, this what they call the background radiation, in 1963. And they found it all over the universe. And it has actually the exact temperature that 
was predicted. They found it by accident. Anyway, since this time, uh, they have confirmed the measurements many, many, many times, and people have a uh, hard time to question the Big Bang Theory. Then in the 1970s and 80s, something called dark matter was discovered. That's a fun thing. It's a hypothetical matter. It's not visible. This is quite interesting coming from scientists that they say that most of our universe consists of something that is invisible. Anyway, dark matter, it kind of interacts with some fundamental forces, but not with others. So they can kind of measure it. Then in 1998, cosmic acceleration was discovered. That is the cosmos, our universe is not just expanding, but it's doing so faster and faster. And they had to invent something called dark energy. That is a hypothetical energy to explain the unexplainable, why the expansion of the universe is accelerating. So that's a statement of faith, I would say even though it's coming from scientists. What they tell us is that about 4% of our universe consists of matter, things we can see and touch and feel, and the rest is either dark matter or dark energy. Chew on that. Back to the Big Bang Theory. It is still the best cosmological model that we have of our universe. It fits with the evidence. Many, many studies have been made during the years. It has now been 80 years and it has not been disproven yet. On the other hand, it hasn't given an explanation yet on why and who's behind it. With all the data that we have collected, they can calculate backwards, kind of rewinding a f film. And it looks as the Big Bang occurred about 13.7 billion years ago. At that time, t equals zero, we had the Big Bang. The temperature was extremely hot, not just thousands or millions of degrees, but far, far more. And the pressure was immense. The whole universe was condensed into a small dot. It could easily fit into your hand. And none of the physical laws worked at that time. Now cosmologists divide the first seconds into smaller parts. I won't bore you with those details. We jump ahead to about one minute after the Big Bang. There we have the photon epoch, where light was evolving in the first gel. Then after three minutes, we call, come to a more interesting part called the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Then the nucleus, the atom, atoms were merging that's just a few minutes after the Big Bang. The first atoms are formed, the deuterium, tritium, helium, lithium, finally beryllium. And it went from 3 to 20 minutes, they calculate, uh, after the Big Bang. And at that time, after 20 minutes, the universe had cooled down so much that heavy elements couldn't be created anymore. And when I say cool, I talk about a thousand million degrees. That's 10 to the ninth Kelvin. Let's move ahead. About a hundred million years after the Big Bang, we see formation of the first stars. And what are stars used for? Well, they are actually factories. They produce heavy elements such as oxygen, carbon, metals and other stuff that we need for life to exist. And later we have the formation of the first galaxies. Moving along to about 9 billion years after the Big Bang, our Sun and then our Earth was created. And today it has been about 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang. In another 5 billion years or so, our Sun will become a red giant, to burn all possible life from Earth and then turn into a white dwarf. <clears throat> Finally, a long, long time after that, the universe will have cooled down even more. No more stars will be created, will end up either with a big crunch where the universe implodes or a big freeze where everything cools down, floats out and there will be no order anymore. But don't worry about that, it's a long, long time from now. Let's talk a little bit about 
big numbers in order to show how fantastically precise the creation is tuned. 10 to the 9th, that's a billion. Doesn't sound that big. How many people have a billion dollars? Anyway, a billion seconds, how long time is that? Well, if you're asking a person to count one, two, three, and so on, he counts one number every second, day and night, without break. It takes him 32 years to count to a billion. To a billion. A billion is actually a big number. What about 10 to the 18th? If we talk about 10 to the 18th seconds, it's not twice as much as a billion, but it's a billion times a billion seconds. That's actually twice as long as the universe has been in existence. So that's a huge number. What about 10 to the 80th? That is about the largest number we can find in the universe. It's the number of atoms that we have in the universe, more or less. Now, what are the chances, for instance, of winning the first prize in Lotto, or whatever it's called where you live? Denmark is probably 1 in 10 million, that is 10 to the 7th. Now here's a number that's a bit bigger, 10 to the 116th. 1 to the 10 to the 116th is the maximum unbalance, they calculated this, between a force, that's the gravitational force, and the amount of energy in the universe for it to exist today. That is, if the gravitational force was a tiny bit stronger, then it would not have let the universe expand. It would have pulled everything together again, and we wouldn't have life on Earth. We wouldn't have an Earth. We wouldn't have life. And if it would be a bit weaker, if the gravitational force wouldn't be that strong as it is, then Stars couldn't have uh, formed, and we wouldn't have life either. So the universe is perfectly tuned for life to exist today. And is it likely that it happened without a designer behind it? No humans can tune any instrument anywhere near this. Here's a one with 116 zeros behind it. Would you play? The lottery with these odds? I don't think so. There are also other forces in the universe that need to be perfectly balanced. The electric force, nuclear forces, and so on. So we can go on another time. To sum up this short presentation about the Big Bang, the universe was created. It was created from nothing. It's not just a religious statement, it's something we read in Genesis 1, yes, but it is also something the scientists believe in. It is hard to prove them wrong. The forces in the universe are extremely well balanced. We can't do it ourselves, but they are, if it wasn't that perfect, we wouldn't have life on Earth and we wouldn't have Earth at all. Just imagine how smart God is. First, he had to think of all the forces. The nuclear forces, the gravitational force, electromagnetic force. Then, he had to make them just right. In size and in function. Okay? Then he had to think up a universe with elements. Lots of elements. More than a hundred with the right properties. I have a presentation just on water. It's a molecule. I can talk long about it. It has so many properties that are essential for life to exist. And so we have lots of elements that need to be perfect in their properties for us to be here today. Then God created everything from nothing. That's also according to the Big Bang Theory. It came out of nothing. So he is pretty smart and pretty powerful. Our God is cool. Thank you for taking time out today. I hope that your faith has been boosted. Knowing a bit about science can really help our faith and the faith of people we reach out to. Take care. Bye bye.